and so I'm just trying to get things up and going. It's a lot. You guys have a lot to learn <laughs> with the company. Yeah, it's uh, definitely want to take it bit by bit. You don't want to try to learn it all in one day. It's virtually yeah. it, it is impossible. Um, so take it bit by bit. Um, you know, work in one section at a time and kind of master each section. That's kind of how most people have, that have had the most success is just taking it uh, with what they're what they're working with and kind of building on top of that as time moves on. So, yeah. I just started as an agent D. Um, I finished Ignite in February, so I can completely relate to you. And I agree with Ross what he's saying. Is at first you feel like you should conquer all that they give you but right. He's right. just pick a couple sections and say okay i'm going to focus on my contact section i'm going to make that smooth right i'm going to mm -hmm. tag everybody i'm going to get all my information in, in in there and then graduate to another place yeah so um i have been working on my contacts what else when we, once i've gotten that pretty well down what do you think would be the next say two or three that should be most important um, to address? Definitely the next thing I would I would move towards with command right now is working on smart plans with those uh, for sure. And then if you wanted to incorporate um, some of the tools they have with social media within designs or um, running Facebook ads, that's kind of the next step up from where you are right now is, is working on those and, and mastering smart plans. Um, so that way you can automate a lot of the business. Thanks. So it's yeah, smart I would, plans. I would agree. Have you looked in there at all? Oh, go ahead. Okay. Have you been in smart plans at all, Dee? Um, no, I haven't. Mm -mm. Great part about smart plans, like what Ross is saying, is you could group all those people in your contacts if you're tagging them, and then all of a sudden you can have something that goes out to them once a month that you're giving them information that you don't even really have to think about. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that sounds great, but gotta get the contacts in first. So you're right, this contacts. is a one step at a time. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually pretty excited about getting into the smart plans. And, and not, honestly, for a new agent, if you need leads, uh, your best resource and your best friend is gonna be that Facebook advertiser and mastering mm -hmm. that. Um, because you, you'll get a lot of numbers and emails uh, Will all of them be great? Probably not. And that's the whole deal with online leads. But the one or two that are is what you're trying to find. So that way you can get some business going for yourself. Um, and, you know, the, the return on investment on something like that with the Facebook ad, people are spending $25 for an ad or $50 for an ad and getting at least one or two clients out of it. So, um, you know, if you really, if you really go after the, the numbers and, and try to nail down where they're at, um, most of them are warm, um, you know, if you can get them there, because <laughs> they're going to put their fences up. Mm -hmm. That's just the way people are when they get a call from a random number. They're going to put a fence up immediately that you're going to have to overcome. And it's mostly just by just trying mm -hmm. to say, hey, I just want to try to help you out. You know, that's your whole goal is to try to help them with whatever they're uh, going through and then work your way into, um, you know, what they're looking for. If they're even looking for anything, some people may be a year or two away from buying. Um, and that's just what you got to kind of uncover. Uh, hey, Dee, I know you're saying you're, you're building your database right now. Uh -huh. Do you, have you kind of said to yourself, okay, this is the group I want to focus on, or you have a certain, um, I guess it's kind of different for every person. Like some people start off with not very many people in their database. And then those people, like Ross said, that's a great opportunity is to do the Facebook paid campaign because you, you're kind of saying to yourself, I don't really have a lot of people to work with. If your contact section or your database, you have, you know, a good amount of people in there that you, let's call it 40 people. Um, the smart plan would be a great opportunity for you to do something that's free and be able to touch that, touch multiple people for yourself. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I've got about 400 people that are going to oh. be um, on there. I just, I'm just working on getting them all entered because I've got them in just such a multitude of places and mostly not ones that can just be, you know, transferred over like my, um, you know, like written have, list and stuff. Have you met with your, with your market center tech coordinator yet uh, at your market center? 
Um, no, but uh, let's see. Somebody well, there. You know I can't remember everybody's is. positions. But yeah, if I'm you sorry, know who that ahead. person is, you can you can get them to help you to import. If you, if you have those people in like a spreadsheet or somewhere, mm -hmm. um, the tech the tech person can help you import them. There's also um, a lot of market centers have a resource. Uh, his name is Scott Leroy uh, Marketing. He does that as well. Right. Where he, he can import all of them at the same time for you. So okay, yeah. I know that um, somebody like that is working on my um, Boomtown list from the last company I was with and getting that in. Perfect. That's, awesome. That is they're an awesome resource. They will save you a lot of time and headache, um, okay. especially when you have so many people you're bringing in. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would like, Dee, I can show you real quickly kind of what Smart Plan um, looks like and how you would add people on there if you want to kind of have a general picture of it. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Would that be helpful? Okay. Mm -hmm. so let me go ahead and I'll share and kind of give you a quick overview. So if you're starting on your home page, the key mm -hmm. to success in smart plans, at least in my opinion, is in your contact section. I'm gonna open that up real quick, just to make sure um, you kind of know what I'm talking about. Is I mentioned tags, so I don't know if as you're entering, and I know you have so many people and you're working through that, but these here are tags. This is gonna allow you to group a lot of people under one category. So if you think about marketing and you were to go and market a flyer, if you had the opportunity to have one go to 100 in one hit, that saves you a lot of time versus handing out one to every one of those 100, right? So picture yourself clicking that. These tags mm -hmm. are helping you to do that. Um, and if you were to be in here, I'm going to show you. I'm going to just go ahead and click on one of my contacts. And I'll show you where you would do that in case you haven't seen it yet. You could edit if you've already put somebody in there and you're like, oh man, I haven't tagged them. I didn't really realize how important that was. You would come to this little pencil here in the middle. So you opened up your contact, grab this edit button. And you can see right down here, there's a section called tags. If you drop it down, there are ones that are already in there for you that you could go ahead and select. Maybe it was a pass by or you could click pass by and it would just pop it right up there. And if you, maybe in your mind, they fall into a different category and you're like, well, man, I know them uh, because they're part of my running club. You could go ahead and type in running and you could just create custom tag, color code it if you want to. So I'm gonna go blue and I would click add and you can see now I have them as a running tag. So if I have, 20 people in my running club, I could tag all of them as running. And if I want to market just to them or put them on a smart plan just for them, it's going to be a lot easier for me to just grab my tag versus grab all 20 people. So hopefully that makes sense when I get over smart plans, but that's going to really save you some time. Yeah, that looks great. Right. But, um, I love them. I, <laughs> I preach them more than probably people care to because I truly see the value <laughs> in putting them in there and the mm -hmm. time and saving that it does. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, I have not done those yet. I should have been doing that all along. Yeah, but, I can yeah. tell you people have been in the business for a long time. Um, once you start growing it so much, it gets a little bit overwhelming if you can't really filter people down. And I think this is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. So I would just click save after I did and put them in. Now, uh, as a heads up, I know you are in the midst of adding people, and I believe the way that you're going to do it, this may not apply per se, but I'm going to give you a quick hit, and then we'll jump in smart plans real fast. Over on the right in contacts where you're adding them, that tag section is in there too. So okay. if you're adding a brand new person, that's going to be available also. Okay, great. Uh, the last item to make smart plans again, most beneficial to you, so you can take advantage. I'm gonna open my contact up. It's gonna be neighborhoods. Uh, if you have their address and you type that in, it will put a primary address or neighborhood to them. I will give you a heads up. Sometimes it's not the neighborhood you think it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. so double check that. You can come in here and you can add a neighborhood. And when I teach this, what I tell everybody, don't think about just where somebody lives as the neighborhood you're putting in. We work with a lot of buyers, right? And they tell us about all these neighborhoods they like. Well, we can search for a neighborhood. 
Um, I'm going to just type one by over by us. So they're like, oh, I love Baxter Village. You, you kind of put that in your brain. You come in here to their neighborhood. You add it. Well, you have a couple options here, right? You could copy the link and send that to them. And it's going to give them a bunch of up-to-date market information, which is awesome. Or we're going to pop into smart plans. You can put them on a smart plan that's going to send them something monthly that shows them the market information. So I'm going to pop over here into smart plans on the left. Um, and just as a heads up, if it helps you, if you click on the top left, the KW logo, it opens this up so you can actually see the names of everything. So if you don't want to scroll everything, this is kind of a, a quick cheat to get to them. I had somebody show me this probably a month ago, and now I, you would think I discovered it because I tell everybody. <laughs> it's the small things. Right. Okay. So when you open up your smart plans, chances are this is going to be empty because you haven't been in here yet. Um, if you're using it, this is where they're going to show up. The awesome part about command and what Keller Williams is offering us is if we come up here to the top left where it says library, they have all these pre-made smart plans put together for us. So if we come down here, they're going to give us a brief description. They'll tell us the steps, how long this is lasting, and how many touches are happening in that time. In addition, you can click view steps and you can see exactly what's happening. So they've made it really easy for us to look at these and say, okay, for my business, this makes sense for my database. Once you come in here, you view them. Um, again, it's all about everybody's an individual business owner. Select the one that makes sense to you and the way that you reach out to your database you would go ahead on the bottom left corner and click add smart plan. Now you can see where mine is bi-weekly neighborhood nurture. You can see I can't click on that one anymore. It's because I already added it into my library. So it's already available to me. Mm -hmm. So you do have to come in here and grab them. Um, for those of us who are new and are trying to figure out smart plans, I tell everyone, do the monthly neighborhood nurture. And I already added that in here, but you would find that in your library. It's my monthly neighborhood nurture. You can see it right here. If I come to the left-hand side where this uh, right pointed arrow is, or triangle, I guess, we drop that down. Again, they'll tell you exactly what it's doing. So you can have a reminder. And you can come on the right-hand side here where it has this people with the plus sign and click add contact to that. And this is where tags are a beautiful thing. I can click the tag button right there. I could select the group that I'm interested in. So I'm like, okay, well, I really want to send neighborhood things to my sphere. So I'm gonna click my sphere tag. Those people are gonna pop up. If I want it to go to all of them, I'm gonna select all. And you can note, just so you can see here, they do tell you, okay, Ashley, she doesn't have any neighborhoods attached to her. Brandon doesn't have any neighborhoods attached to him. So they're not gonna be able to get this because they don't have any neighborhoods. This could be a great opportunity for you when you're doing this where you say, okay, I'm gonna jot their names down and I'm gonna make sure I go into their contact and I'm gonna make sure I put a neighborhood in there. Unselect them, but Jason has neighborhoods. So I'm gonna make sure I add him to the smart plan. I selected him, add to smart plan, and you have the opportunity, you can start it now, you can schedule it, which is awesome. Uh, there are a lot of people when they're setting up their marketing, they do it ahead of time. This is a great way to kind of be a couple steps ahead of yourself and get a nice flow and have things in place so you don't have to worry about it. And mm -hmm. with this, um, with the monthly neighborhood nurture, so as it would imply, it's going out once a month. And I'm gonna show you what that email looks like in here in just a second. But if you were to go ahead and click confirm in the bottom right, it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna send that to them within like a minute. I, I know this because I've tested it, it's really, really fast. <laughs> I'm gonna cancel out and I'm gonna show you what they receive. So it's gonna say monthly neighborhood update, your name will be with it. When they open it up, you can see your name and all your information's up there. If you have a picture, your picture is gonna show up. I don't like taking pictures, so I'm being resistant to this. But <laughs> I <laughs> feel you. Yeah, I know. I just, everybody's like, you're going to do one? I'm like, well, do I have to? The KW looks perfectly fine to me. Uh, <laughs> so that will be there. 
if you scroll down, this is what I love. I think this looks so nice. It's so easy to read, but you're going to see, it's going to say neighborhood trends. It's going to show you your map, the neighborhood that it's telling you about. It's going to tell you information about that neighborhood. So there's one home for sale. Average home price is $420,000. There's two listings. If they were interested in that, they could click Explore Neighborhood. You can see I have multiple neighborhoods for this person. So this sends them both of those neighborhoods. Again, it's great information. They're getting this opportunity to get up-to-date market information. And you're looking like a great resource to them, right? Nobody would be wicked offended to have this come in their email like, oh man, DeAndre sent me this and tell me about these neighborhoods I really like. Wow, the Barrowick neighborhood has a bunch of homes for sale right now. I should, I should definitely look over there. I've been wanting to move there. If they want to see more, they click that Explore Neighborhood button. And I always like to show people uh, what you're sending out because I think it's so important that we can speak to what we're sharing with our customers and clients. So you can see it opens it up. It's going to show us those homes that are available right now in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We can click on. You can see both neighborhoods are up there. I could go ahead and switch to the Berwick one. And I see all those homes that are currently for sale in there. I love this. I think it's awesome. Um, it's just such an easy way to give information out. And again, we talk about it all the time. You got to keep touching people. Well, this is an easy touch. So I would encourage you to go in your smart plans and go ahead and start putting people on the monthly neighborhood nurture because it's one of the easiest ways to keep in contact with people and you're offering great information to them. Um, I do want to note at the very bottom, if they were to click explore the neighborhood, you pop up down there too. So if they're going to go ahead and say, Ooh, I got this email from Deandra. I'm going to pop all my information in here. I have a question about one of those homes well then i'm gonna get that sent to me and i would get an alert um, for this if she sent an actual question and when i say alert let's see if it's gonna let me find my command again good luck to me okay <laughs> sometimes i click this button up here and then all of a sudden everything's gone um where your little bell is on the very top right of your command screen next to your name there'll be this little red dot that shows up and it would tell you that you had a message. So you can see here, I have one that says new contact form message received from me because I was doing a test. So you would see it there. If you have your Kelly app, and I know this is, I'm going to wrap up here, but if you have your Kelly app, you would get a notification in that as well. Okay. But do you see, does that make sense? The kind of the simplicity that you could start with and how resourceful that is? Yeah, it does. That looks great. Um, one question I've got about that, um, where I am, quite a few of my clients are in rural areas, so they're not actually in a neighborhood. Can I do, you know, like just, can I specify, you know, like parameters of an area that's not a specific neighborhood for them? Let me show you what I've, um, I tell agents in my market center how to try and get around that. So I'm going to share again with you. And I'm going to go back to contacts. And this isn't going to work for everyone, but it's a great um, attempt, I'll call it, to just <laughs> try to get them some information. I'm going to wait for her to slowly open. She's a little sassy today. I was getting a little mad at her because I'm like, I have to, we have to do this training later. I need you to work with me. But she's working okay so let's say i have a contact and we're going to take your instance you're like they're not really in a neighborhood per se when you open them up and you go to this neighborhood section and you're like okay i'm going to click add a neighborhood they have this find on a map option if you click on that you can come up here and do search for a location and i'm going to say let's see, get one home for you last and my brother lives here. So 103 blocks and circle. I could go ahead and type in the address instead. It's going to put the, drop the pin on my map. And if you start to come over here on the right and press the plus sign to zoom in, it's going to give you kind of like a squared in area. You could try to do this and see if they have it in one 
way, shape, or form within a location. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do to try to see if I could get them something. And okay. once you zoom in far enough, you can scroll over it, and it's going to tell you, like in this case, this is Belvedere Plantation. And I could select it, and it's going to check mark it. You could come over to the side, maybe, maybe where they are, there is not one um, listed, but maybe right next to it is. Well, that could possibly be a good comp. You might want to investigate to make sure, but you could come and select another one, and you can see I just checked market. But this is what I've been telling my agents because say either the neighborhood that I think they're in isn't showing up or they're not really associated with one. I say, okay, click find on the map and see if you can find something when you zoom in that would work for where they're living. And once you do that and you click whatever you can in your case, um, obviously I don't know the addresses you're talking about, but you can come to the bottom right here after you check mark and that's your way of selecting. You would click save. And then they're going to pop up on there. So if you can't find anything searching for a neighborhood here, try the find on map. I find this really helpful. Okay, thanks. Yep. Awesome. Um, any other questions? What we were basically talking about, everyone, was one, Dee was telling us she's kind of new into the system and really kind of where, where you should start if you're new, which is take a section, conquer it, move on to another one, conquer. We were saying contacts, obviously we want to own that, make it wicked organized for ourselves because it rolls into all the other sections of command and it makes everything else a little bit smoother for yourself. And then we talked about smart plans, that if you set up your contact section really nicely, you organize them with tags, make sure you're putting neighborhoods on them, then you're gonna be able to select smart plans and do some of the campaigns a bit faster and more efficiently for yourself. Cool. Well, that was really about what I had today. Does anybody have any other questions? Um, we can maybe take another few minutes and see if there's anything that in those areas that I can help show. No, that's it. We all we're going to wrap up our Friday. So, Kelly, I, I just had one quick question. Uh, sorry, I, I I had to join the call late. Oh, you're good. No worries. And so, what what did we cover today? Was that um, so the main thing we were covering was how to make sure you organize your contacts, which is taking advantage of your tags and taking advantage of putting neighborhoods in there so you can utilize smart plans a little bit more effectively. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I, I just want to, so um, there is, uh, is there other videos I know I was on the one the other day, and I just want to make sure that I can go back and and uh, review these if they're available elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, um, Debbie, do you know where where Kelly's keeping those? Or Monica, either of y'all. Let me try and pull up. I know she has a a um, YouTube link. One second. Awesome. Thank you. Is it recording from the last bolt session? Yeah, that, is that what you were wanting to see the last, um, is it Ron? Yes. You were trying to see the recordings of these specific bold attack, correct? Right. Okay, let me see if that one's up there. One second. Great, thanks. I recognize Monica from the last one. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what, I think what is difficult for me is there, there is so many things on command. And uh, the thing that, that really is difficult is, it's almost like I get frozen because I see all of this stuff and I don't really even know where to start. And I, you know, I'm this, this, I have some things in command, I've been working with it a little bit, but I, I, I am definitely do not understand it for sure. I, I, would, I would be the first to say I don't understand it. You're not alone. I Pretty much any, and I, I said at the beginning of the call, I just became an agent. I just finished Ignite in February. So I was just as overwhelmed and I took a step back and what I told myself and what I mentioned to, to Dee earlier was you got to just pick one area, focus in it. It's really hard. You want to go into the others, but start in one, stay there until you feel comfortable, then move on. 
because if you look at it as all of it in one big chunk, you're going to, you're going to want to just bail out because it's, it's too much to try and jump around in. So I like to compare it to either your cell phone or your Google account. Do you, do you use Google? Yes. So do you use Gmail, Google yes. Calendar? Yes. Google yes. Drive? Yes. Google, Ana Google Analytics? Yes. Domains? No. Google Keep? Yes. Google AdWords? No. So Google has a whole suite of things. If I were to show you the full suite of applets that Google has, you're probably only using 10% of them. So it's the same thing. When you log into command, you're going to say, okay, there's so many different things here. I only, I'm only going to use these 10% right now. I'll come back one day and explore this other tool right here that may be pretty cool. And it's not that Google made all these useless tools. There's a lot of value in them, but they may just not be relevant for you right now. Mm -hmm. And the same thing when you go on your iPhone, you, you're going to use the messenger app, the phone app, and maybe the mail app. And then one day you're, you're going to wonder, is there an app that does this other thing? And you're going to go to the app store, you're going to check it out, and you're going to download it. Some might be free, some you're going to pay for. But as your needs for your business grow, you're going to explore different tools and see what's useful to you. So approach command with that same mindset, and that's where you're going to get the best value. The, and Ron, and I, put, go ahead. I put two links in the chat for you that you might find helpful. They walk you through step-by-step step how, to, how to learn command in chunks. So okay. it's not so. So, long. does it does this uh, chat does does the link in the chat does it stay where I can go to it or when the when we're done with the session is it gone? It's gone. You're gonna want to copy and paste that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't see the recordings for the session. You know, I looked for them earlier. That's why I asked, and I. Yeah. Ron, what's your email? Ron dot Williams at g uh, kw dot com. Hey, Ron, do you have a, a tech trainer in your market center? Do I have what? Do you have a tech trainer in your market center that you're at? I do. I would encourage you to reach out to them. What we're kind of trained to do is to help you start in certain areas and grow out of it. They might have a plan in place that could help you kind of have a, instead of having such the wide view, kind of narrow you in a little bit and okay. allow you to kind of do that funnel effect. Just okay. like what Debbie was explaining, but I would definitely reach out to them. Okay, um, and you know, I, I, Debbie, I like the way you described the um, uh, the uh, all the connectivity with the Google uh, products. Mm -hmm. But the the difficulty is that whether I use Keep or not is not costing me money or not making me money. Mm -hmm. But th this is I'm trying to figure out how to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, well, the thing is, it's a, it's a, there, there, there are certain key tools within Google that would probably help you make money, but you don't know. Right, right, right. So, in, so in, within command, there are certain things that you have to use, right? So like you must use opportunities because that's how we get paid. So, uh -huh. so you want to use the basics with, with things like that. With the Facebook campaigns, there's a lot going on. There's, there's a lot of conversations around that. Everybody now wants to learn, okay, how do I get leads through command? That sounds pretty cool. I want to do that, right? So there's the, the cool things that we can do in command that, that we can make money with. And then there's the must-haves. You know, in order for us to get our files um, approved by our compliance department, I must know how to use opportunities. So they're, they're both sides of that. The same thing with Google. You know, you're going to do your emails because that's just how you're going to stay in communication every day. But there are th these other tools like with Google Analytics, that's how you can know who's visiting your website every day and, you know, where, where should I focus my marketing and how can I then um, capitalize and improve my ROI. If I, if I tweak just one thing about my, my website, I could probably make an extra $10,000 just by having Google Analytics. So email, Google Analytics, um, opportunities and campaigns. So it's the same concept, but you have to start, you have to get the foundation pieces in there first, learn how to do contacts, learn how to do opportunities, get that piece, lay that groundwork first, and then start exploring because those pieces get easier once you get the foundation in. And so that, that's, that's really key. So uh, Kelly, what you're talking about is contacts. So that's where I'm gonna start, really get, really get, really get familiar with it because 
Uh, the, the, the problem that uh, I see a lot of people, they, they get so involved in the process that they never get to the, the how, to, how to make this thing work. Yeah. You, know, you, get, you get really drawn into, okay, this is really cool. Let me jump into this. Let me, let me do this thing on Instagram. But, yeah. you know. What happens with that? <laughs> well, you get people who do that, right? And they yeah. get excited and they get a lead or they, they, maybe they get a client, but they didn't figure out all the other stuff. Yeah. They get yes. super stressed out. They don't know how to get them through the process. And yes. because they had this bad experience, all of a sudden they're like discouraged to want to build right. their business because they had a bad, that first time through was, was tough because they, they jumped over things they shouldn't have jumped over. Yes. And, imagine, you know, go ahead. Imagine if you, if, you, if you understood context first, right? You know how to add a contact. And you focused on mastering your database first. So you have a, you have 500 people that you add to your database, and you learn how to um, set them up on a smart plan and start nurturing them. So now you can sit back and say, okay, command is taking care of those people for me. Now I can go learn how to bring more people in, right? So before you even start bringing people into command, learn how to take care of who's already in there. Yeah. So you have the, the nurturers running, you have the, the text campaigns running, you have a call plan set up so you know who to call every quarter or every two weeks or whatever. And that part of your business is running smoothly. So now when you're running a lead campaign, you're not overwhelmed when two extra leads show up in your database. Because as soon as those two leads show up, you know exactly which smart plan to put them on because you already know how to do that stuff. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And so um, the, here, here's, here's a very, probably a, a very easy thing for, for anyone to answer. But the thing that I find annoying, I brought over uh, a bunch of contacts. Uh, I, I set up a spreadsheet, uh, brought over a, a bunch of contacts, and a whole lot of them need to be deleted. And it seems like it is a pain in the neck to just delete someone, I, you know. I, <laughs> so I'm, I, I want to make sure that what I have is not just... It, it doesn't run up a whole lot of numbers. It, 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 there are people that are actually potential clients. So um, is there, a, is there a, some, some training? Some, I don't even know if that requires a training. Maybe that's just rudimentary. But, you know, when I go through it, it's just like, is there not just a delete? Can you just not, you can like any contacts, delete? <laughs> no, this doesn't seem to be that. You, are, you, can, you can archive. If you want to, like, fully get somebody out of there, then they make you take next step but if you can you can i can show you if you want um yeah. to archive somebody i have two thoughts around our um deleting people is it that they're a duplicate or is it just somebody you haven't touched in a long time the people that i'm i'm talking about getting rid of so for for kicks i brought in uh my uh uh the trainers from our from our um location from our market center all of those people just just to practice Got it. Okay. So those people are not going to be customers ever. <laughs> so, well, you never uh, know. So you, you know what's interesting? Nobody in my market center has ever asked me if I want to buy a house. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Everyone you talk to every day is a potential client. Don't make assumptions. Huh. Just because I have a real estate license, I, I, I would hire an, a, an agent when I'm ready to do a transaction. But you assume that just because I have a license and just because I teach real estate that I wouldn't hire you. That's a good point. Never make an assumption. Mm -hmm. So one thing I tell my, my agents is Zillow, Zillow a lot every day just to get a name and a phone number and an email address. And we get these contacts every day and we delete them. You know how much money Zillow would pay you to get that name and email address? Mm -hmm. Every time you delete, somebody you're throwing money out the window the mm -hmm. other thing you have to remember is what if you know something happened and i stopped selling houses and went and got a job at a bank right in two years i might need to buy another i might need to buy a house and then i'm not a real estate agent anymore right, right. okay so i i get i get your point but you know for right now i have i have uh, uh people that uh, these these same people Mm -hmm. um, they they are getting they're on my campaigns and stuff like that from E Edge, and so they're like seriously. <laughs> but, so, 
So what I would think about is how, how else, so, so the cool thing with command is you can put your clients on a specific campaign. You can put your real estate friends on a different campaign because okay. if you're not, if I'm not buying a house with you right away, you can, you can have a different conversation with me. You know, you, you could be talking to me about, you know, how the market is doing. You could be talking about referrals. We could be talking about training. You could, I mean, just so many different things. That's a good point. Yes. Yeah, so, I, so I would start deleting people. Unless somebody said, you know what, take me out of your database. I'm not deleting you. Ron, okay. do you want me to show you where you can do that if you needed to? Okay. Absolutely. Don't Absolutely. get crazy about it. Don't get crazy about it. But I'll show you so, so you can do it if you want. If you yes. think you need a absolutely okay so you're on your contact page and you can come over here on the right hand side where there's these three dots and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do over here you can see you can add activity note archive this if you click archive so oh. i'm going to pick somebody i have adam i made this guy up adam Al he's a tester right so i could come over here to my tester Go up here, click archive. Are you sure it's going to pop their name up in there? So you know you selected the right person. You click archive and refresh slowly but surely. And his name was Adam Alatest or something. I made up something weird. I don't know. Get under the other gun and you you think. So Adam's gone. Allie's still there though. So that took him out of my database. Now you can bring them back in if you ever wanted to. So the reason they don't give you the delete option is because they don't want you all of a sudden, like you're talking about, you're like, oh, I just, I, these are all agents. I'm not talking to them. But just like Monica said, in a year and a half, all of a sudden you bump into them. They're like, oh yeah, I stopped, I stopped being a realtor and I'm actually looking for a house. And you're like, oh shoot, I lost all their information. You can go back in the command and you can pull them back in. That's okay. why they don't let you delete it. It, it's, okay. it's smart. That's beneficial to us as agents. Okay. All right. So w what I learned is uh, uh, from everyone, start with contacts, work on opportunities. Mm -hmm. I'm an engineer by training. So this creative stuff is not my thing. I, you know, I got to have a process. And, you know, without a process, it's like, oh, my goodness, how do I get, how do I live my life? Uh, and so that's, that's, that's the thing I'm struggling with. I love technology. Uh, it's just, I don't want to spend a lot of time on something that's not going to get me uh, contacts, referrals. That's, that's what I'm focused on. If you want, um, and D, you can do this as well. If you all put your emails in the chat for me, I run trainings every day, sometimes twice a day, and I can send you my schedule. And you're more than welcome to jump on that. Um, you can pick a day and time that of something you're looking to learn, and you're, and you're more than welcome to join, but I can email you that schedule. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Thank uh, you. Yeah, you guys, absolutely. You guys are the best. I appreciate it. And such a small group. I'm glad no one else checked in. Oh, no, no, I'm really not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. It's been great. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming on here. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Have, have a good weekend. weekend. Have a good night.